In lesson one, you'll learn to recognize the basic signs of in front, level, and behind, and how they are placed on the stave to show the positions. To start with, the first thing I'd like you to be able to do is to place yourself in the notation. We use the five line stave, much like music, and as you can see, I've drawn rather crudely a figure on the stave so that you can see how each line represents a different area in the body. Starting with the bottom line, that's what we call the floor line, so that's where I've placed the feet. The second line up is the knee line, then we come to the waist, then the shoulder line, and the top line we use is for the top of the head. Also bear in mind that this is a view from the back, so that I can keep all the symbols that I'm using on the right, I would still notate on the right side, and the signs that I'm using for the left will stay on the left side. Having done that, we can now imagine that I have a light bulb on each hand, on each foot. So if you look at me from the back, and I place my feet in second position, and my arms out to the side, imagine now that I've turned out all the lights in the room, and you can only see the light bulbs on my hands and feet. Now if I write exactly where my hands are in relation to my body on the stave, like so, noticing that my arms are slightly wider than my feet, then you can see that I can show the position on the stave. So there are my feet just on the floor line, and there are my arms just below shoulders, and they're right out to the side. So now I've introduced to you the first s sign, the level sign. That means anything that is level with my body, I can write now on this stave in relation to an upright body. I can place my feet together, but still underneath me. So I would connect the two level signs. I can place the arms over my head and apart. So now I have my feet together, and my arms are over my head like that and wide. Now I don't know which way my palms are facing. This is additional information that we can put on the stave, but for today's purposes, we're just keeping things simple. Another thing I would like to mention at this point is that we are assuming classical technique. So you'll notice that when I was showing the positions, I was showing turnout and a natural curve of the arms. This makes the notation a little bit simpler to read from a classical ballet point of view. Now, this is a two-dimensional surface that I'm using, and I need to be able to add depth. So in order to show things that are in front of my body, I will use what we call the in front sign. And to show things that are behind my body, I will use the behind sign, which is a dot. Now suddenly, this two-dimensional surface will become a three-dimensional surface. I'm going to just show you, we'll keep our feet in first position, but now let's do another very basic ballet position. We'll place the hands together and in front. So they're close together and in front. You'll notice that they are below the waist, but above the knees. And that I can interpret as a classical position called bra ba. So my feet are in first, and my arms are curved and in front. Again, we're assuming classical technique. I can take those same arm lines and place them overhead. It's close together and slightly in front of the body. I'll place the feet in first position again. And now I'll just show you sideways so that you can see that my arms are still in front of my body but overhead. And my feet are in first position. Now let's move on to some positions of the feet. We've already established second position and we've shown first position. Now let's put one foot in front of the body and one foot behind. Again, I'll show you sideways so you can see that the center of my body weight is in between my feet, and I've got one foot in front of my body line and one foot behind. And that's very easily shown with an in front sign and a behind sign. And that will place us in fourth position. 
So with these signs, I can now show virtually every position. If I want to show my arms in fourth position, let's say, I'm going to move down here. My feet are in first. And I'm going to place one arm in front and just above the waistline, and the other arm in front but overhead. Now you'll also notice that in each one of these bars, I have added a dotted line, just so that we can be sure we know which is on the right and which is on the left. And that's just at the learning stage. Eventually, these dotted lines will disappear. But it helps you to see that my, this is my right arm because it's on the right side of my center line and it's in front and my left arm is overhead. So I've placed my right arm in front just above the waist with the little finger and the left arm is high. Now if I want to show a position such as arabesque, just for simplicity I'll keep the feet in first position. But now let's just look for a moment at where the arms are placed. Let's say in third arabesque. So I've got my right arm below shoulder height, just, and my left arm is about um, eye line, at the level with my eye line. So if I write that, I'm going to place this arm below my shoulders, just, and this arm in front, but at the eye line. Now, if you feel that you might be confused about whether this is a position that might be a curved position, I think we can safely say that the arm here and the arm here is not a usually used position. And that's how we can surmise that that is probably going to be interpreted as third arabesque. So now we've placed the arms in bra ba here. And I'll show you first position of arms. We're here, just above the waist. And we've already shown fifth position. And here I've got second position. Now what about third position? Now I'm going to place my right arm again in front and the other arm out to the side. And what about demi-seconde? That's going to be level at the side and slightly wider. So you should be able to now place all of these positions. First position of feet, second position of feet, fourth position of feet, and all of the arm positions that we commonly use. I've cleared the board so that we can review the three, the three signs, this being the level sign, this being the forward sign, and this being the behind sign. And so that we can talk now about third position and fifth position, which are an amalgamation of these signs. In order to show one foot contacting the other, you may remember we used first position, the two level signs together. Now in fifth position, my feet are also in contact, but now I've got one foot in front of the other. Since in classical ballet, we want to keep our weight forward. It's been decided to use the level sign in combination with the behind sign to show which foot is behind. So this position is then fifth position with the left foot behind. This position shows it with the right foot behind. Because the two signs are in contact with each other, that tells us that the feet are in contact with each other. If I want to show that the feet are not quite so crossed, as in third position, I'll just go down to the next line here. Then I will take the, the behind sign and just bring it in slightly so that you'll see a little bit of the level sign on either side. It's clear from the way I've written it that it is the right foot that is behind because it's closer to the right side of the sign. This then will be third, it's a little bit too large, there. This is third with the foot, the left foot at the back. Now, just for extra practice, I'll put some positions on here and see if you can decipher what those positions are. So here, I have third with the right foot behind, and I have the right arm in front 
and that makes third in opposition. And the same is true on this side. I have my left foot behind, but my left arm is in front making third in opposition. Let's move up to these fifth positions now. Now if you have a look here, the arms are just below the waist and wide, and they're in front. So that could be interpreted as, here I am in fifth with my right foot in front and my left foot behind, and my arms are just below the waist. I'll turn and face you so you can see. Just below the waist and in front, and we would call that demi-bras. And now this arm line. That's a less commonly used arm line but we can still figure out what it is from where it's placed on the stave. I've got fifth position with the right foot at the back, and my left arm is at the side but below the shoulders, and my right arm is over my head and to the side. So we can interpret it as being that position. Now what's going to follow are some positions done by a dancer with the notation on the screen at the same time so that you can see how one relates to the other. On the screen, you can see the five-line musical stave that we are using for Benish notation. And just as a reminder, we superimposed a drawn dancer, and you can see how it matches from the feet at the bottom up through to the top of the head at the top. The notation shows the feet in second position, level with the body, and the arms in second position, just below the shoulders. Our demonstrator, Michelle, is showing the same position. Again, her feet are in second position, and the arms are also in second position. Now, the feet are together and touching in first position, and the arms, which are below the waist but still to the side, are in demi-second. Michelle has her leg in second position at 90 degrees, and her arms are overhead in an open fifth. You'll notice that the signs are the level signs and farther apart, so we know that we're in an open fifth as opposed to a fifth position. Now, the arms are in first position. Notice that the forward signs are contacting and sitting on top of the waist line, and the feet are in first. The left leg is now at 90 degrees in front, and the arms are close together, slightly in front of the body and overhead, creating fifth position. Here, the feet are together and level with the body in first position, and the forward signs for the hands are placed between the waist and the knee and in front, creating bra-ba. With the feet still in first position, the arms are quite wide, but they're behind the body. So the position is similar to demi second, but taken behind the line of the body. Now the feet are in fourth position with the right foot in front and the arms are in arabesque. The left arm is in front, a little bit lower than the top of the head and slightly above the shoulders. The right arm is to the side and behind the body and just about at waist height. Now Michelle is demonstrating first arabesque en l'air the left leg is behind at hip height. The right arm is in front, between the top of the head and the shoulder line. And the left arm is slightly above the waist, behind and to the side. 